I'm Steve, back here with Dr. Rodney Van Pelt again, and we've been having a really interesting conversation, a couple of them now. This is our third one on fatty liver and all the things that you can do and all the things that Dr. Rodney actually did. He actually reversed fatty liver and feels better than he has, he said, in decades. So we want to continue this. Welcome, Dr. Rodney. Good morning, Steve. Nice to be with you. Okay, so we talked about, and if, if you all haven't watched the first two um, on fatty liver, you might want to go watch those because they're fascinating. Um, so now we're, we're going to continue to talk about some other things that you did to clear up or remove your fatty liver. So um, just to, to get caught up from last time, it was you know reducing carbohydrates to just keep it really general. You can all go back and watch that, those two if you want. But what else did you do? There's a few other things that you did to help remove the fat out of your liver. Tell us about that. Yeah, thank you. Uh, that's right. We talked last time about really dietary changes largely you know, either either eliminating things, reducing things, uh, and increasing, you know, certain things in my, in my diet. Um, and I did those things, and those are huge, per perhaps the most impactful, okay, toward uh, reversing uh, fatty liver disease are the, are the changes in the diet, particularly reducing carbohydrates and increasing uh, healthy fats. Uh, in the diet. But besides that, I took supplements. Okay, I, I in, increased some things, gave, gave some extra of important things to my body. The first of them was omega-3 fats. Now, that's related to diet because you can get omega-3 fats from a number of sources. Okay, fish, uh, especially cold water fish like salmon, are especially helpful for that. Only wild caught salmon, you wanna know that. Farmed salmon, oh my gosh. Uh, don't, I don't recommend it ever, <laughs> not a bite. Um, but wild caught salmon uh, ha is, has healthy fats in it a lot, actually. It's pretty rich in uh, EPA and DHA, which are subunits of omega-3 fats, and we want those in our diets. So I was supplementing a lot of that, um, and uh, niacin. I was supplementing niacin, which also helps with fatty liver disease. It helps regulate the blood sugar and uh, deal deal with uh, carbohydrates. Which, and as we said already, carbohydrates are causing the fatty liver disease. So um, I supplemented with ALA, which is alpha lipoic acid. And uh, that also has general anti-inflammatory properties as well as um, regu helps regulate our metabolism, the metabolism of, of many things, including carbohydrates, you guessed it. Um, I supplemented with B-complex vitamins, with zinc, picolinate, which also helps regulate blood sugar, um, and NAC, N-acetylcysteine. Uh, NAC is a precursor of glutathione. It's glutathione is like a master um, anti-inflammatory agent or um, antioxidant in our bodies. It's it is huge. It's so important at, in our health overall. It is just good for every. Really, I believe it's good for everything. Glutathione. It just is helping us with you know, either prevent or reverse every disease process that there is, glutathione is going to be important in it, and I need lots of it. So, you know, just a little stick something in there right there. I, Me personally, I call glutathione vitamin C on steroids. Mm -hmm. it's, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. And your body does produce it, but I interrupted, but I just, I had to get that in there. Yeah, good. That, right, it's a beautiful way. See, vitamin C is an amazing antioxidant. It's it is wonderful, and and it's really cheap. It's it's uh, quite absorbable. 
it's really easy to take and i take that i take quite a bit of it every day i like it a lot and i attribute it to part of my health you know is is uh supplementing uh, vitamin c but all of them okay some would say i saw glutathione in the health food store how come you don't just take glutathione well glutathione isn't absorbed well by mouth that's why you can take a capsule of it by mouth but it wants to get um uh digested by the acid and the digestive enzymes in the stomach so we don't wind up absorbing very much when we take an oral dose of it and we take it by mouth we don't get we don't absorb very much nac on the other hand is absorbed quite well that's why I, you know that's why i take nac glutathione you can take other ways you can get it by iv it can be administered by rectal suppository there's there's a number of ways where you can absorb glutathione really well i mean iv 100 percent absorption it's <laughs> you got all of it went straight in the veins it was all absorbed and that that's very very effective um but i i did my things at home i didn't get iv glutathione yeah but so those are the supplements that i took okay so those are the supplements all great ones um so what about milk thistle did you take milk thistle i didn't but milk thistle nourishes the liver yeah. okay i was just curious about that one so there's something else that i know that you did what was it? <laughs> yeah, and this is the last thing that's on my on my list. I made a list. Like, what what was my plan? What did I do? And I wrote them down. This is the one item that remains, and it goes by a couple names. Uh, intermittent fasting is one name for it, and time limited eating is an is another name for it. But I restricted the time in which i consume calories in my day um, so and there's a there's a, a variety of ways that people can approach this that is to say there's not just one time frame that can be chosen but there's 24 hours in a day and many people many of us are eating calories man from almost as soon as we wake up in the morning, you know, six in the morning until just before we go to bed at night, maybe at 10. Okay, so our eating window there, let's see, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. is 12 and four is 16 hours to 10. So for many, it's 16 hour eating window. Okay, we're eating, you know, off and on all throughout those 16 hours. And then we fast from 10, until six so we have this eight hours of fasting some don't even do that they'll wake up you know at midnight and go into the kitchen and eat more you know so some don't even get the eight hours and we call breakfast breakfast because it's breaking the fast okay but how long was the fast eight hours if you ate you know last eight at ten and then you eat at six in the morning um, but i reduced mine uh to a an eight hour window uh, of eating so i eat whatever meals there's no requirement for how many meals you can eat three meals in that time you could eat one meal well if it was one meal it'd be a really short reading you might call that a one hour eating window if you only ate one meal a day um, but so you can have three meals you could have two meals you know in that time um, i eat approximately at 10 in the morning two in the afternoon six in the evening um, and then I don't eat any calories in between then. I do have a cup of coffee when I wake up, black coffee, no sugar, no cream. Um, no calories. Yeah, no so you, you're basically doing a 16-hour a fast. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's yeah. the intermittent fast. Okay, and so I'm, a, I'm assuming, again, you're the doctor, but that's giving your body a break to let it recover do what it needs to do is that why it works or tell us why it works well it does more than one thing for us but that's true it gives the intestines a chance to just relax and rest it gives the the liver a chance to, catch up. to, settle, to settle down and catch up and that catching up is exactly what happens see when i first stop eating the body still wants to be burning carbohydrates that it's that's its primary fuel sort of designed to burn carbohydrates and 
So when I first stop eating after I've eaten, it has carbohydrates. There's glycogen in the liver. There's glucose in the blood from the meal I ate. And the body runs off of that. Well, as my fast now extends, okay, pretty soon, my body runs out of glucose in the blood. It doesn't really go to zero, but it's it's beginning to get low. The extra in the blood is is drop, starting to drop low. It, the body can't keep up with glycogen anymore. That's a limited energy store in the liver is glycogen. So that's released into the blood and it runs out of that. Well, in the 16 hours, because that's a long time to not be putting any more calories in there, no more fresh carbohydrate or glucose um, or fat, you know, but the body now has to find another source for, for fuel. And it does. It, it'll turn to burning fat. It'll say, oh, oh, we got to tap into some fat. We have we got some extra energy around. It's we got some stored energy. Hopefully the energy, that fat, that extra energy isn't being stored in your liver anymore. Okay, right? Mine's reversed. That's not where my fat stores are, not in my liver. But I have a little fat. There's there's a little on there. Um, we're supposed to have some, and my body can go and find that fat, okay, and 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 turn it into energy. It can transform it into carbohydrate, put it in the blood. So it's learning to burn fat. And that's part of what I want to do. It, the name we give to that is metabolic flexibility. That is to have my body be geared up and ready. It's almost like a, a flex vehicle, a vehicle that can burn gas or it can burn propane you know it can burn natural gas uh, or propane right it's and you just kind of flip a switch and it can burn either one um some cars can burn diesel or what they call biodiesel okay which is kind of uh it's vegetable oil leftover vegetable oil from cooking french fries and stuff um, but cars can burn more than one kind of fuel there are certain cars that can and um and our bodies can they can be trained and intermittent fasting or this time limited eating uh trains my body to to be able to flip the switch to be able to do them both and that's what i want i want it to be able to burn carbohydrates when i present some because i you know if you ask me do you eat carbs you said you know you said carbs are the cause of fatty liver and we don't want to you know, we, we want to, what I said is we want to reduce carbohydrates. I eliminate grains. I don't want to eat any grains. Okay, that's the truth. And I, I avoid them. Um, and I am reducing sugar, dramatic reduction in sugar. But do I eat carbohydrates? Yes, I eat some carbs. And Lord willing, they're in non-grain forms. That's my goal, you know, is to have them in non-grain forms and to have very limited amounts of sugar. Uh, and sugar goes by a lot of names, okay? Agave nectar, uh, corn syrup, um, maltodextrin, uh, maple syrup, honey. There's a whole bunch of forms of sugar. Uh, and and I, I limit, limit them all, but not eliminate. I eliminate grains. I eliminate, I limit sugar strongly. Um, and overall, my body now is flexible. So if I present, you know, some, um, let's say potato, I don't eat a lot of potatoes. They're really high in carbohydrates. <laughs> so, but I do, um, you know, I, but I'm not afraid to eat some potato. My body is flexible. It can burn some carbohydrates. It knows how to deal with carbs. It knows how to deal with fats. Those are our two energy sources. Some people say, wait a minute. I saw once a statistic on how many calories there are in protein. Does our body burn protein also? Turns out it can. We don't want it to do that. <laughs> it burns That's our true. muscles. It burns our muscles up. It can do it. It's a very hard thing for the body to do. It doesn't do it regularly. It's not really designed to burn protein as fuel. Um, it's possible to do it, we, uh, but we, it's not designed for that. And the primary sources of fuel for our body are, in fact, carbohydrate and fat. And I want my body to be flexible to be able to do both of them. 
And that's what time-limited eating helps me do. I do it almost every day. You don't have to, by the way. A person could do time-limited eating. You know, they could choose and do it, you know, five days a week and not do it on the weekends. They could do it, you know, every other day, a week on, a week off. Anyway, people choose and have different ways of applying it. I do it regularly and ongoing. It's simple to do. It's it simple. good for us in many ways and uh, doesn't cost anything, right? It's free um, and it's not very hard, uh, really. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, and so it is, it's, it's easier once you do it. You go, oh, that wasn't that hard. You know, a 16 hour window where you're not eating is not that hard, um, especially you do it a couple of times. So just to kind of, you know, Put this all together so you talked about the things that you eat things that you don't eat the supplements that you take and when you combine that with the intermittent fasting what happened is it fair to say what happened was first your body goes okay let's get rid of this fat out of my liver let's convert the fat in my liver to usable energy and now the fat's gone and now the, now what's happening is your body is burning fat, subcutaneous fat, off of your body. Is mm -hmm. that right? Yes. Yep. I know I, I joke sometimes because, see, I if you said, well, you said you were at your ideal body weight. Well, yeah, I was really close to it. And you say, well, have you ever been fat? Yeah, I have. I, I mean, I lost 47 pounds. Okay. I, I was 47 pounds overweight. And, and it just kept it just kept going up. You know, this is when I was eating lots of carbs. I was close to a vegan, hard, you know, hardly eating any meat, really, um, and not, but not being healthy. Um, and I will say this, this wasn't specifically related to fatty liver disease, but one of the things that I combined with these other things I'm mentioning was uh, far infrared sauna. I, I took these dry sauna sessions uh, three times a week. Um, and and detox your body, detoxify, right? Yep. In multiple that's ways. Different. That's a different thing. That's I don't. My I don't know a direct correlation to fatty liver disease with, with that. But just for full, you know, I feel really good, and I think that that's part of it. And I continue to to take saunas. Uh, I do. In fact, I even do it more now. I do it probably on average six days a week. Hmm. Uh, that's great. Mm -hmm. So again, you know, we're, we're not against carbohydrates. Um, what I tell people is, look, my body has changed. So mm -hmm. my macros have changed significantly from the age of when I was eating and training and playing football when I was 22 wow. up to now, almost 60. It's the macros that changed. Carbohydrates are good. Fats are good. And proteins are all good. But mm -hmm. you need to find the right macro proportion for your body and your age and your body composition. Those things matter. Mm -hmm. Yep, I agree. Every, everyone doesn't respond to the same thing. Um, I'm sharing with you what worked for me. You know, peop, is there anyone who should have caution about like the eating plan that I just talked about? I would say, yeah, people who have uh, diabetes who are taking um, pills for diabetes, people who are taking insulin for diabetes, um, they need to be thoughtful about this. If they dramatically reduce their carbohydrates, um, they will need to reduce their medicines also, or they could become low blood sugar. Okay. But yeah. uh, anyway, so it, it's, it's not just a blanket. Well, this is what everyone should do. Uh, it, it takes some, some wisdom to implement these things. For most people, it's not, it doesn't take much. Okay, you, you don't have to take a lot into this. There are some who need to approach it, you know, with, with caution, actually. Um, and, and it's simple and straightforward. Yeah. Okay, well, again, we thank you, doctor. You know, like I always say, come up with your own questions, three or four questions, whatever the topic is. Turn your brain on. Apply common sense and answer your own questions. I just think it's a good way to, a good guideline. So 
We thank you, Dr. Rodney Van Pelt, for talking with us these last few sessions on fatty liver. It's exciting to know that there is hope for anybody out there who may have this condition, which is a lot of people, including children these days. So thank yeah. you for being with us. Yeah, well, it's my pleasure to be with you. And all you who are watching, thank you for being with us. See you next time.